Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff, and welcome to the fourth installment of Cheap Knife Week. And today, we're going to be taking a look at this knife. As you might expect, since, you know, it's the knife that's on screen right now. This is the Schrade... That number. 108-4281. Yes, that is, the, this knife doesn't really have a name. Uh... The Schrade Ultra Glide technology little flipper carbon fiber thing. Ultra Glide is their word for the Ultra Glide technology is what they call when the knife has bearings. Okay. Interesting little knife. Let's go ahead and jump into the review. Let's take a blade length measurement. We are coming in here under three inches. So that's cool for people who might be looking for a smaller knife because. They have smaller hands, or they just don't want to carry a big knife, or maybe they can't carry a big knife legally. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess I'll say, I picked up this, when I, when I bought this knife, I got it for $15. And I've seen it floating around the internet anywhere from like 12 bucks to $30. Don't buy this for $30. You'll, you'll, see, you'll see why at the end of the video. Okay, let's do our size comparisons. Grab our rats. Whoops. There's the one. And here's R2D2. There we go. I think I, I bought these two in the same store, actually. I don't think it was the same day, though. But there's that. Let's grab our Civivis. There's the Praxis. The Elementum. And yeah, this is a little, little tiny knife. For sure. PM2. And you guys already know it. Got the bug out from Benchmade. Very nice, very nice. And to close up comparisons, let's compare against the last knife reviewed for Cheap Knife Week. The Outdoor Edge Swinky. I filmed that, the review for that video, just a couple minutes ago, actually. And let's also compare it against the other Schrade that we're reviewing for Cheap Knife Week. Awesome. So, a little bit about this knife. What are you looking at in terms of materials? Well, we have a 9CR18MOV blade, which is cool. That's great steel. That's Civivi used to use that a lot. We have carbon fiber. Uh, actually better quality than you might expect. I do think it's a carbon fiber sticker on G... I don't know, on G10, but... I don't know, though. It doesn't... Will you focus, camera? It doesn't have kind of the same cross-section as some other carbon fiber G10 stickers I've, I've seen. It feels better than carbon fiber stickers usually do, which is interesting. And they have a steel frame lock. Bearings in the pivot. Flipper. Opener. Uh, yeah. Some good stuff. Now, the first thing I thought when I saw this knife was, oh, that looks a lot like a ZT. The 0450, the 0452, I can't remember. I don't, I hate the, the, the numbers game. Um, one of the Sinkovich designs. And while I do think it does resemble that knife, I don't think Schrade was trying to directly copy it. Uh, because for one, this knife is super tiny and that knife is quite a bit larger, but uh, I, I don't think they were trying to copy ZT in any way. Maybe you guys disagree with me. Anyways, let's go ahead and go to the cutting slash ergonomics slash carry discussion part of the video because uh, some pretty important information over there. All right, so let's talk about the Schrade S... Uh, Notes, people, notes. SCH1084. I hope this knife has a name other than that. If it does, I'll make sure to include it in the better part of the, in the, the, the main part of the review. But anyways, this little guy here. Let's talk about him. Um, where do we start, right? Where do we even start? Airplane. Um... Let's talk about the ergonomics. Uh, it's a small knife, 
And as you can see here, they have some uh, well-defined grooves. The ergonomics on this knife are not terrible, actually. There's this little dip here in the blade. You can put your thumb on there. Uh, it, it does feel pretty cramped. Like, I can get four fingers on there, but it's just kind of cramped. If I don't really try to get four fingers on there, it loosens it up a little bit and I can get a, a little bit of a better grip. Interstate's noisy. Uh, so yeah, ergonomics are okay. How's the action? So it's running on bearings and if you, if you hit the flipper tab just right, it will deploy kind of um, it's not very reliable though at all. Uh, not the best action. Giving a little bit of wrist uh, works best. How does it carry? Well, we have this tip up pocket clip. Very standard looking pocket clip, really plain and basic. Uh, very long clip. Screws are not recessed. The clip is not recessed. Let's go ahead and tilt down here for a sec. I got a new camera rig we're testing out. The clip has enough springiness that it goes in and out just fine. It carries good. It's a lightweight knife. We've got this carbon fiber on this side and then steel on the other side, but yeah, it carries just fine. Um, let's go ahead and do some cutting. <laughs> so as you can see here, I have a real cutting board now. Well, actually, it's it's just a board, but you know what? Improvement, guys, improvement. So let's go ahead and start off with our cardboard. Let's get this big old box up here. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. This knife is about, check my notes again. Yeah, so I took three behind the edge measurements of this guy at different parts of the blade, and I got 33 thousandths, 25 thousandths, and 27 thousandths. So, let's see how that translates to uh, actual cutting. I can tell you one thing right away. Uh, It's not the sliciest knife ever, but the uh, the blade stock is thin enough that going through cardboard, it, it, it kind of makes up for it just a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and do our rope pull. I have my old rope back, by the way. I'm not sure when you guys will be seeing this video, but I had this other rope for a little, whatever, whatever. Okay, that wasn't bad. That should be fairly decent. Let's do a push. Okay, it actually crunched through that really well, as you might expect with such a obtuse uh, geometry there behind the edge near the tip. So, crunched through that pretty good. Let's get our pool noodle out here. I think we're gonna see some serious issues arising. Let's try and get a nice thin little slice. Yeah, okay, so as you can see, I started, I tried to make it thin, but the blade was just not acute enough behind the edge to stay very thin, and it wanted to kind of wedge out instead of just slicing through. Let's do a couple more, just see how it's pushing down on the noodle before it cuts through? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty thick. Not the most precise cutter or slicer, but um, it's it's a sharpened piece of steel. So, yeah, let's get back to the table. Alrighty, we are back. Um, a real quick, actually, I've been getting some comments lately about the rocks and various items I have in the background of my my videos. Um, <laughs> I, I might make a video one day addressing all that, but just real quick, 
These here are some brachiopod fossils. Those are Permian age. Uh, here's a little chunk of some rose quartz. Very, very nice little specimen. I found that actually the same place I found this. This is a chunk of barite. I like that quite a bit. Um, I have a rhyolite right here. That's a type of volcanic rock. Here is something interesting. It's breaking, which is a shame, but this kind of greenish square chunk is a piece of fluorite, and around it are a bunch of quartz crystals. And uh, they have this kind of reddish orange color because they have a like a hematite, like a kind of a, a rusting coating on them. And then this is another big chunk of of quartz with some various inclusions and and stuff. Anyways, maybe I'll do a video on all that sometime. And then here the dinosaur switches between videos, but right now it's a Medusa Ceratops made by Collecta. Anyways, onto this knife. <laughs> so, as you could probably tell from the um, cutting footage video, this knife has some issues. But we're going to start with what I like. First thing that I like is sometimes this knife is comfortable. <laughs> God, that's a great way to start, isn't it? Sometimes this knife is comfortable in hand. Um, yeah, I, it, sometimes it's not uncomfortable. Like right here with kind of a light grip, it works very well. Uh, I can actually technically get four fingers on here with this little flat area there for my pinky to go over. And it does fit my hand. And for just a basic EDC knife, if I'm not doing anything super um, heavy use, if I'm not doing anything that requires a lot of fine motor control, you know, opening packages and stuff like that, this works great. For opening packages, this, this is perfectly fine. So that's good. Next thing, I do like the carbon fiber here. It does have kind of a, a very, you know, shiny look. And sometimes that, that makes it look cheap. But... The carbon fiber actually feels decent quality, and like I said, I think it is a carbon fiber sticker on top of G10, but I don't know. The way they've, they've done it makes it feel kind of different than other carbon fiber G10 sticker situations I've come across. Let me find an example. So the only example I could find that I have right now, I don't typically like the carbon fiber sticker on G10 thing, so I don't typically keep many knives that have that, but... One I do still have is a CGRB Crag, which I need to review this knife sometime. If we look here, you know, we see that reflective, you know, shiny carbon fiber look. And then if we flip it over, we can see that it's clearly like the kind of the smoothed over G10 texture. On this knife, I don't know, maybe it is G10, but the way it's cut, maybe that's what's changing it. We kind of have these steps. That kind of to me, makes it feel a little bit better. I don't know why. Maybe this is actual carbon fiber for $15. I doubt it, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, next thing, the knife is super lightweight. Like this knife weighs basically nothing because there's only the carbon fiber on this side and then you have this steel frame lock, but the knife weighs basically nothing. So that's going to be really, really important for a lot of people. Um... Next thing, I do kind of like the coating on the blade. This gray coating held up fairly well. I say as I flip it over, I think this is just tape resin. Yeah, yeah, it's just gunk. Um, the blade kind of looks nice. I like the little swedge here. Um, I like that it's 9CR18. I think that's a great steel, especially for you know people who might just be starting out. Um, so yeah, that's good. I do like that it's a steel frame lock. I think budget frame lock knives are really, really cool. And there's not very many of them, many of them out there uh, from companies like Civivi or CGRB or, or things like that. Mostly Kershaw makes a lot of steel frame locks. A lot of other companies that specialize in budget knives really don't, but I kind of like that. And um, yeah, it is perfectly centered. That's really cool. Okay, let's get into what I don't like. <laughs> so, first thing, the action's just not very good. 
Uh, the flipper tab is actually positioned in an okay place. It's decently big and you can get a flip out of it. Like if you really, you know, brace yourself, the knife will flip reliably. However, it's also very easy to just kind of get the, the blade to just kind of fart out of there. The detent's not super strong. And it, it's really weird. Like sometimes if you press down on like the pocket clip, it'll strengthen the detent and give you a better flip, especially with the push, like a push button flip. But if you squeeze in the wrong place, it locks up the knife, which of course, that's one problem with frame locks always. But it's just weird. And then, yeah, there we go, it kind of came out. It's just weird that like if I squeeze here, it'll lock it up. If I squeeze here, it gives it a better flip. I don't know. It's just not a very good action. Um, like when I was carrying this, I would pull this out of my pocket and nine times out of 10, I'd miss the flip. Again, if I sit here and really concentrate on it, I can make it flip reliably, but that's, that's not really what you want. You know, you want your knife to flip good without you having to think about it. So yeah, that's not great. Next thing, unlock the knife was really weird for me. I think it's just cause it was so small, but like my fingers were all getting in each other's way and stuff. That, that was something that I noticed really, really annoyed me about this knife when I was carrying it. So I wasn't a big fan of that. This lanyard hole I think is in a terrible place right here above the pocket clip. Um, I think this knife probably would have been better out without a lanyard hole or a lanyard post at least. Um, the pocket clip pretty much sucks. It has a good amount of spring, but as you can see, it is not recessed. The screws are not recessed. So it ends up just not going into the pocket very well at all. So that's, that's a big shame. Next thing, there's no over travel stop. I think the pocket clip is supposed to act as an over travel stop. But like I said, the, I could easily unspring this, this lock bar if I, if I really pressed on it hard enough. So that's not amazing. The ergonomics of this knife, again, I like if I get up in here with the end, like really bear down with secure grip, See how that flipper tab just poked me in the hand there? So I, I, you know, scoot back a little bit, hold it lighter. And this is the grip that I was talking about is feels okay. But this is, again, more for just your light duty stuff. If you're going to have to be bearing down on the knife and you want to squeeze hard, it's very uncomfortable. And I, I just don't care for it. However, oops, the elephant in the room is the blade. This blade just sucks. I mean, uh, besides being made out of 9CR steel, I don't like the big Shrade logo there. Look at this plunge grind. Like, what is that? You see how that, like, how we have that little grind that comes down there? It's like a compound grind at the back of the blade. Like, why does there plunge? I mean, I guess, I don't know. They, they just had something going on there. I'm not even sure what this is. You can see back here how thick it is behind the edge. Focus. We talked about that. The sharpening was not done very well at all. I have not sharpened this knife. I can see there's a couple of spots in there that are a little bit damaged. I probably should sharpen it, but I don't think I'll really be carrying it after this video. Overall, the, the knife just did not cut very well. It didn't perform very well for anything. And I mean, it's a pocket knife. It's supposed to cut. It's supposed to, you know, separate things. And so if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, it's kind of a big problem, you know? So uh, let's go ahead and go on to my final conclusions. Okay, so final conclusions. I do not recommend this knife. Um, I cannot recommend this knife to anyone who's an enthusiast especially, but even for someone who's not a knife person, Again, that's kind of the whole point of this cheap knife week is can people who aren't enthusiasts, who don't know any better. Wow, that sounds really pretentious. Yuck. Anyways, can, can regular people, oh my gosh, what am I saying? <laughs> can people who aren't super knowledgeable about knives get a good pocket knife if they just walk into a store and buy something they find there? If this is the knife they pick up, I'm gonna say no, they did not get a good knife. 
In fact, I think this will frustrate a lot of people. Um, this will be a knife that'll make them want to find an assisted knife because even though this knife runs on bearings, you know, if the action isn't good, they won't want bearings anymore. They won't want to, they won't ever experience the actual benefits of a knife with bearings. Here's something. Let me get my Civivi Praxis. Now, a lot of times when people uh, don't or aren't really familiar with knives, or if they're used to spring assisted knives, they'll get a manual knife and they won't flip it right. And this is something I've talked about a lot with Civivis, is I feel like Civivis detents sometimes aren't really the best. But, you know, if you have someone a knife, you want them to be able to open it. And even a knife with a good action, like the Civivi Praxis definitely has a better action than this knife. I remember handing this knife, I've handed this knife to my dad, my grandpa, and my dad's becoming more of a knife guy now, but, you know, the, the, the grandpa's like, oh, you pull the flipper tab, or, or, you know, push the flipper tab. And the first thing they, you know, they kind of do it a little bit weak because they expect there to be a spring to take over. This is why I always like to recommend, you know, for someone's first knife, uh, I don't like slip joints for people's first time because they're unsafe. Um, and I also want there to be a manual action that's reliable. So if we take a look at the sin cut, this is an excellent knife because, you know, you, you hear me talk about it all the time. Flipper tabs matter a lot with the flipper, but the, the, the knife leads... The, the scales lead nicely into the flipper tab. It has good jimping on there. It's positioned above the center line of the pivot. And this knife is very hard to... This knife is very hard to fail. And so you could give this knife to someone who's, you know, wants a pocket knife, but again, not super experienced. And they'll, they'll, they'll get it right away. You know? Oh, that's how it works. And again, I've talked about this again on the this series... These are knives I'm kind of thinking about are for people who need a pocket knife a lot, but aren't really enthusiasts. So this knife, I don't really think will be good. I think it'll be very frustrating because of the, the poor detent and the weak action. The other thing, it's very small. I don't think that's going to be good for a lot of people. And I also don't think this knife is super durable. Um, you can see here, I've had to tighten the pivot a couple of times, and you can already see that the screw is stripping out. That's another bad thing. Um, also, this knife, uh, if I remember right, I couldn't get these back screws out. They're locked tight in very, very hard, so that's not amazing. Yeah, look at that detent. And the last thing is, this blade just doesn't perform very well. I, I, I mean, geez, after one sharpening, essentially this part of the edge right here is going to be an axe. It's going to be basically unusable. So... This is probably the worst knife we've reviewed so far for Cheap Knife Week. That being said, I do know that Schrade can make good stuff. In fact, Schrade's coming out with some things in, they call it the, their Alpha line, I think. That, like, using S35VN and stuff. I want to get my hands on some of those knives. Um, and I've handled other Schrade knives that I really did enjoy. And I Schrade can make a good knife. I just don't think they hit the mark with this one. So I'm, I'm going to leave us at that for now. Uh, the next knife we're going to be taking a look at, which is going to be the last knife for Cheap Knife Week, is the Camillus LK6. I'm excited to film a video for this knife. I'll tell you that. But for now, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I've been Gideon, and I will see you tomorrow for this review. Adios.